everybody. I'm Mary Jane Bruce, and I heard from your teacher that you love books. Well, I love books too, and I would love to share with you one of my favorite books. This is an old, old book that was my mother's. It's about 80 years old. Do you know anybody that's 80 years old? Well, when I was a girl, she used to tell me stories from this book, and then she got the book and read them to me. I love these stories. So I hope you'll like these stories too. I'll read you one today. And if you like it, tell the teacher and I'll read you some more. There are several stories in this book and I love the pictures. It's called The Little, oops, Little Brown Bear. Little Brown Bear loses his clothes. Okay, so here's Little Brown Bear in bed and look at his clothes on the floor. Clothes aren't supposed to be on the floor like that, are they? Halfway up Blueberry Hill in a funny old yellow house lived Little Brown Bear. Little Brown Bear liked to hunt for honey. He liked to sit on the steps of the old yellow house and he liked to lie in the hammock under the mulberry tree. Hammock is kind of like a little bed. But he didn't like to hang up his clothes when he went to bed. Uh-oh. Every night when little brown bear was ready to go to bed, plop, down on the floor went his nice red coat, his new checkered shirt, and his handsome little gray trousers, and plop, into one corner went his polka dotted silk tie, and onto the chair went his little straw hat. Poof, out went the candle, whisk, under the covers went little brown bear. One night, round Mr. Moon looked down through the window into Little Brown Bear's room and called out loudly, such an untidy room for a good little bear, coat on the floor, hat on the chair. But Little Brown Bear turned over in bed, pulled the covers around his ears and pretended he hadn't heard a word that round Mr. Moon had been saying. Soon old Mr. Owl looked in through the window and called out very, very loudly, to wit, to woo, to it, to woo, such a careless thing for a bear to do. But Little Brown Bear just turned over in bed and pulled the covers higher over his ears and pretended he hadn't heard a word that old Mr. Owl had been saying. By and by, Mr. Wind came whistling around and around the old yellow house. He called through the window very, very loudly, Little Brown Bear, don't wait to, don't wait. Hang up your clothes before it's too late. Here's a picture of him snuggled up in bed and his clothes on the floor and the owl talking to him through the window. But that foolish little bear only turned over in bed, pulled the clothes still higher over his ears and pretended he hadn't heard a word that Mr. Wind had been saying. Then whoof, Mr. Wind blew right in through the window and whisked up Little Brown Bear's nice little red coat, his new checkered shirt, and his handsome little gray trousers. Then woof, he blew again, and away went Little Brown Bear's polka dotted silk tie and his little straw hat. In the morning, Little Brown Bear jumped out of bed bright and early. He was going to take his shiny tin pail and go to the woods after blueberries, but he couldn't find his clothes. He looked for them everywhere. He looked upstairs and downstairs. He looked in every corner and under the furniture, but he could not find them. Here he woke up and his clothes were gone. What do you think? I don't think he should have put those clothes on the floor, do you? So little brown bear put on his last year's old patch overalls and sat down on the steps of the yellow house and cried and cried. By and by, he heard Mrs. Duck calling as she hurried down the hill. You're all invited to come to tea down in my garden, garden at half past three. That made little brown bear feel very bad indeed. And he cried and cried harder than ever. For of course, he couldn't go to Mrs. Duck's tea party in his last year's old patched overalls. So he just sat there in the sun thinking and crying and crying and thinking and thinking and crying. Suddenly, all of that thinking, a thought popped right into Little Brown Bear's head. He wiped his eyes on his old last year's bandana and jumped up. I know what I'll do, he said to himself. Even if I can't go to the tea party myself, I'll take Mrs. Duck a pail of nice fresh mulberries for her party. I can hurry home before anyone sees that I'm not dressed up. 
So little brown bear ran down to the mulberry tree. Here's little brown, brown bear on his front porch thinking about it as Mrs. Duck goes by. So little brown bear ran over to the mulberry tree and began to shake it very hard. And what do you suppose happened? Right out of that mulberry tree, something went plop and down fell little brown bear's nice red coat and his new checkered shirt and his handsome little gray trousers and his polka dotted silk tie and his little straw hat. Yep, you got it. For that was where Mr. Wynn had hidden them after he had whisked them away the night before. So little brown bear bear went to mrs duck's tea party after all see since he was good to go do something for her then he found his clothes then that night round mr moon looked in through little brown bear's window and smiled he smiled and he smiled then old mr owl looked in through the window and he smiled he smiled and smiled and by and by mr wind looked through the window and smiled why do you think he was smiling he smiled and smiled and smiled coat, hat, and tie hung up with care. What a tidy room for a little brown bear, he chuckled softly to himself. So here's little brown bear, and he's in his bed, but he hung up all of his clothes. I think that was the best idea, don't you? Well, I hope you like my story from this book, and I hope to hear from you soon. Take care. Enjoy your reading.